so it was kind of in the process of doing all these different things that I noticed all these like tools and resources that were free or affordable to kind of help manage an online business. So then I got the idea to write a book called Frugalpreneur to kind of like talk about the different types of online business models and the different tools and resources to use for those. And then while I was doing that, I was like, I should do start a podcast called Frugalpreneur to coincide with the book. But it was just going to be like, you know, 10 episodes or something like interviewing the CEOs of the different companies that I talk about in the book. Podcast Junkies episode 245. Welcome back. I'm your host, Harry Duran. If you're new to the show, it's the one where we seek out interesting voices in podcasting and get them to talk about their shows and what else is happening in their lives. This is the last episode of 2020, and it certainly has been a doozy. My heart goes out to anyone who's been affected by any of the events that have happened this year, COVID, racial unrest, so many things, and a year to remember, an election year to boot as well. I want to thank all of you for being loyal listeners of this show, for supporting me throughout all these years, and I definitely don't take for granted each and every comment I get when someone discovers the show or mentions that they've been a fan for several years. Last episode, I got to speak to my friend Russ Johns. He's a live streaming expert and host of The Pirate Broadcast. His energy level is so infectious, and Russ and I had a really fun time on the show last week. Make sure you check that one out, episode 244. This week, I introduced you to Sarah St. John. She's an entrepreneur, a writer, an animal lover, a world traveler, and host of the Frugalpreneur podcast. In this show, we discuss her podcast journey, how she became an entrepreneur, and how she used the podcast as a marketing tool for her book, Frugalpreneur. Sarah explains how she decides what content and guests to include on the show, and how she integrates everything she's learned from studying the topic and integrates it into her podcast. It's an inspiring entrepreneurial story, and we talk a little bit about the reception and feedback she's gotten on the show and how it's impacted other people. We wrap up with her goals and her love of animals and travel, which is certainly something that we all could use a little bit more of right now. This episode is brought to you by Focusrite and specifically the Scarlett 2i2 sound card, one of my favorite go-to sound cards, something I use for each and every podcast recording. The 3G line is a go-to for all new podcasters. Find out more at podcastjunkies.com forward slash Focusrite and the link will be in the show notes as well. Don't forget, if you enjoyed this episode or past episodes, please leave us a rating and a review at ratethispodcast.com forward slash podcast junkies, and we'll be sure to read them out on future episodes. Let's not forget that this episode is also brought to you by Fullcast. Fullcast Fullcast.co is the website. If you need help with any aspect of your show from launch to production and marketing, we can help. Schedule a free chat at fullcast.co forward slash chat 15 about your existing or new show. Stay tuned in the episode and I'll reveal this week's retention hashtag. But for now, let's jump into this conversation with Sarah. So Sarah St. John, host of The Frugalpreneur, thanks for joining us on Podcast Junkies. Well, thanks so much for having me. I'm glad to be here. I listened to your show and excited to, to be on the show. And you've been on my show. I Us recording this right now, I haven't published it yet, but yeah. hopefully in the next couple of weeks, I'll get that out. <laughs> <laughs> How did you hear about uh, the show? Well, I had been familiar with it for a while. I know we had connected on Podmatch. We were just talking before we started here. Yeah. But I was familiar with the show already. And I know like you work with Squadcast or you, yeah. yeah, and and some other different things. And so just always see your name and face popping up everywhere. <laughs> That's good. What's your given the name of your show, like do you remember like the first I guess the first thing you sold, because that's the sign that you're an entrepreneur, right? And that, that you're, you've been able to like sell something either online or in person. Do you have that memory? The first time I sold something from the podcast or just- No, just in general. Oh, yeah, yeah, in, general. in general. Yeah, yeah. As in, where you consider yourself like an entrepreneur. Oh, well, I've had so many businesses. I've been an entrepreneur for over a decade mm. and I started doing it with photography and so okay. I guess you could technically say that was the first thing I sold. That was a, a service. Yeah. Where you got paid for something, yeah. Right. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, and uh, I, I realized that I enjoyed taking photos of like landscapes and architecture and animals, but not people. That's where the money is. I was doing yeah, weddings yeah, yeah. and portraits. 
But the bigger issue was just the expense of maintaining and upkeeping equipment and just all of that. Mm. So then that's when I switched over to an online business model because it's a, a lot less overhead. Yeah. <laughs> and I tried everything, you know, drop shipping, affiliate marketing, blogging, everything. Were you listening to uh, Smart Passive Income? Yeah. Yeah. I, I still <laughs> listen to that one, actually. <laughs> A lot of people get a lot of ideas there. I think it's good and bad because Pat gets people excited because he has so many people who have done so many different things. And I think people just listen when they're getting started and they're like drop shipping, affiliate marketing. And because I think I did like affiliate marketing, I think it was like, I don't know why it was about something I'm tapping having to do with like German Shepherds. I was trying to create like a niche blog because huh. he did that food trucker thing, mm -hmm. which I which I thought was interesting. So yeah, early days, I think you're throwing a lot of stuff at the wall as an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then, um, so it was kind of in the process of doing all these different things that I noticed all these like tools and resources that were free or affordable to kind of help manage an mm. online business. So then I got the idea to write a book called Frugalpreneur to kind of like talk about the different types of online business models and the different tools and resources to use for those. Mm -hmm. And then while I was doing that, I was like, I should do start a podcast called Frugalpreneur to coincide with the book. But it was just going to be like, you know, 10 episodes or something like interviewing the CEOs of the different companies that I talk about in the book. But I realized I was getting more leverage and traction with the podcast than even the book. And I enjoyed mm. doing it and the connections that I was making and and the conversations and everything. So I was like, I'm going to keep this going. And now I'm almost at 70 episodes. So I think podcasting is what, where I'm sticking. That's where it's at. <laughs> I always tell people that there's a ton of ways to create content, right? And you sort of have to work towards your strengths. So there's people that love writing. They can do like the 3000 word blog posts. And so they become bloggers and been doing it for years and then to your point, the people that love writing books, there's people like with six or seven books. And it's just like, it feels like they're always able to like generate that content. And then there's people that love being on video, right? They do LinkedIn lives, Facebook lives, Instagram lives. And for some reason, they're, they're able to do it like every day. <laughs> it's just like, you see their feeds and just like, man, like the, the consistency is definitely, um, something to admire, right? That they're always mm -hmm. able to do that. But then the, I think for podcasting, there's people that like to talk, but don't necessarily need, like they feel like they need to be in front of a camera. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, for me, that's been what has been most attractive about this platform, just to have longer drawn out conversations with people that I'm interested in and doing interesting things. And I'm wondering if that's what you found because you said you were getting more traction with the with the podcast than the book. So I'm wondering what were the aspects about the podcast that you were starting to enjoy and mm -hmm. see results with? Yeah. And, and, you know, everyone says have a book as a business card. And I think that's definitely better than not having anything. But I almost feel like you need to have a podcast as a business card. Or like if you have a business, use it as part of your marketing. You know, like every company needs a website. I think every company is going to need a podcast at some point. But I just found that, well, first of all, I was getting more traffic because of the, like the different podcast directories are basically search engines. And then, yeah. yeah and then now even with um, Google, like transcribing podcasts. So someone searches something in Google, a podcast might pop up. So just a bunch of different ways people can find you. And then it seems like once someone does find you and they listen to a few episodes and really like it, they stick around and like binge listen. And and I've gotten more messages on like LinkedIn and Facebook and wherever from these random people I've don't even <laughs> I've never met them. And they're like, yeah. I found your podcast and I love it and whatever. And I'm getting like reviews on the podcast from people and it's like you don't know. I mean, you can check your statistics and analytics, but you don't really know yeah. until you start getting that feedback. And so, but I didn't, I, I've never really gotten that kind of feedback with the book or, I mean, a couple of reviews here and there, but, or with anything else I've done. And, and then like, in addition to that, like the connections that I've made 
both through having guests and being a guest on other shows, just getting to know those guests and hosts and then maybe a potential, you know, you never know, future collaboration of some sort. But I I don't know if it's because you're listen like when you're listening to a podcast I mean, you could be multitasking. You could be driving or something. Yeah, it's, it, it, it's certain tasks. Like you can do tasks that don't require you to like heavily focus right. on something like you know mowing the lawn, doing dishes, walking a dog. You know that, that they're going out for a run, stuff like that. Right. Yeah. So I guess when people just listen to you for, you know, okay. So if someone's watching a YouTube video, for example they might make it in five minutes or I think that's probably why so many YouTube videos are only five or 10 minutes because <laughs> that's <laughs> yeah, not yeah, as much yeah, patience yeah. and time people have. And you have to be in front of a screen. Right. Exactly. You have to use yeah. your eyes and can't really be multitasking and all that. So I think the medium of podcasting is more appealing to a lot of people in some ways like myself, because you don't have to look at anything like with reading and YouTube videos and you can multitask. But then you're able to spend 30 minutes, an hour listening to this person, whether it's the host or the guest, and you feel like you're getting to know them. And I don't know, there's just a deeper connection, I think, than other mediums. Like, What platforms were you using for the interviews early on? Because I, fa- I found, and what I realized, and, and I think what was important for me from day one, I was using Skype with call recorder, yeah. but I realized like nobody knew who I was in the world of podcasting. And if I wanted to, if one of my objectives was to build relationships, I'm like, if you just hear somebody, you know, it's nice to say you can like have the audio in here. But I think nowadays you've seen all these solutions popping up because I think there's something different about having that face to face for the hour that people keep, you know, don't realize just how powerful it is. Right. Yeah. I've always pretty much used Squadcast from the get go. And that's actually what we're using right now. And and I know you're. Uh, yeah. My founding advisor. Yeah. yeah. And I'm looking forward to when they release the, the capability of recording the screen. So then you can use that yeah. also for YouTube. Oh, interesting. Okay. But you know, when they're, they film the video aspect. Yeah. Video recording is coming up in December. So oh, is it December? The, okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I know. Originally, it was like spring and then summer. and <laughs> <laughs> But I'm looking forward to that. But even without that, I think it's helpful, like you said, to be able to see each other. And plus the audio, I think, is a lot better with Squadcast. Yes. Yeah, because it's capturing. So it's, so it's a listener who may have not heard of Squadcast yet. It's capturing the audio locally on each of our machines as we're recording. So it's a lossless audio, like a WAV file. And then, and it's syncing it up to the cloud while we're having the conversation. So it's not like hour long conversation. Now you have to wait an hour. <laughs> right. It's usually, it's usually about a minute, I think at most before the files are synced up. Yeah. Well, actually, now that I think back when I first started the podcast, cause I started in, I think it was June of 2019. Yeah. The first few episodes I put out with my book, I think I did do Zoom with those or Ringer maybe because I didn't know about Squadcast. I assumed they existed back then, but but it yeah. wasn't. And then I had like a kind of a big gap between episodes. I did seven episodes with my first book and then a gap. And then once COVID hit and I was like working from home and everything, I had like all this extra time. And so I started cranking them out and <laughs> And I went, so I've gone from like seven episodes to almost 70 now in yeah. since COVID. So. <laughs> so talk a little bit about, since you, you were developing these, you were collecting these resources of like free or, or low cost stuff for entrepreneurs, which made their way, its way into the book. And then how were you thinking about who to invite on the show and how has that changed since you started about, you know, when you think about who you've recorded and who you'd like to have. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So initially when I started, I was recording either the CEO or somebody kind of in the marketing department of different companies that I talk about in the book. Like for example, King Sumo has a free like viral giveaway platform. And then Mailer Light is an email platform. Did you get to speak to those founders? Let's see. 
King Sumo, I didn't get to talk to Noah Kagan. I'd like to someday. <laughs> but it was somebody within his team, okay. though. And then, yeah. yeah, and I talked to someone at Mobile Monkey, someone at Thinkific, someone at Privy. So, yeah, the first few episodes was definitely more focused on particular, like, software as a service type of companies that were free or affordable. But since then, I've branched out to, I still do some of that, as well as just talking with people in different areas of online business, whether it's podcasters or bloggers or drop shippers or affiliate marketers, coaches and consultants, just different ways you can make money online and just getting their story and advice and whatnot and how to do it on a budget. And actually starting in 2021, I'm shifting gears slightly to where I'm going to be interviewing people who started their business with less than a thousand dollars and built it to over a million dollars without mm. any like venture capital or very cool any of that kind of stuff. So and so how how are you? That's interesting. How are you finding those people? So yeah, it is a little interest different because up to this point. I've just been contacting people that I ha- I'm already familiar with. Like you, for example, I contacted you for the show because I already was familiar with you and yeah. like Matt McWilliams for affiliate marketing and Mike Morrison for membership sites, just, you know, people I'd already been familiar with, but with this new switch that I'm doing in 2021, yeah, I don't know of anyone off the top of my head who started with a thousand and, uh, well, other than Barbara Corcoran, I don't know if you've, read, <laughs> if you've read her book. Well, you you always have to have that dream <laughs> guest, like the wish list. Like, you know, a lot of people have like Oprah or Michelle Obama. Mm-hmm. But like, yeah, Barbara Corcoran, like put, put it on the board, wherever, like, you know, wherever it inspires you and have that on there. I think what, what you can do, what, what I've seen effectively is when people are looking for a certain type of guest, they just put it on their socials. Mm-hmm. So I would go to like your LinkedIn, go to your Facebook, your Twitter Like, I don't really do much personal stuff, to be honest, on Facebook, but I keep it because I promo like my podcast, I promo my business because it's, it's a platform. I mean, it's, and it's got a decent reach because it's my friend, my network, my friends and my, and their friends. And, and some of those people work in companies that may need the service. So you never know. Mm -hmm. And it's just been easy for me. So just put that question out. Does anyone know an entrepreneur who started with less than a thousand and is now making over a million dollars in their business. And if they don't know someone, they'll ask the question or, you know, I I would think if you did that today, you know, probably you'd have a good handful of names by the end of the week (laughs) to start, to start with. Well, actually I did do that when I first got the idea a month or two ago that that's what I was going to do in 2021. I did do that though. I didn't, I don't think I used any hashtags, which I maybe should have. So I haven't really gotten very far with that, but then what I started doing so we'd already talked about pod match, but there's some other like podcasts, hosts and guest matching services. And so what I've done is I've actually gone to each of those. So pod match, pod it, pod booker and matchmaker.fm. There's several. And I will like narrow the search down by category for business or entrepreneurship. And then I will literally, and I did this yesterday, my next round of it, (laughs) I literally go through every single person who is listed under business or entrepreneurship, send them a direct message saying, hey, this is what I'm looking for. And I say, number one, started your business with under a thousand. Number two, have built it up to over a million and not done it with any kind of outside capital. And if that uh, applies to you, then apply here or whatever. I set up a little thing that they can go to. So I've sent that out and I think I have so far, I have like maybe 10 or 15 responses and then I'll need to go through them and like, that's great. Yeah. Weed through those, I guess from there, but yeah. So that's how I'm doing. It sounds that what's interesting is I always think about it from a marketing perspective and you're thinking about it also as a business owner, uh, I wonder where you see the entrepreneurial aspect of this, because for me, it's then like, once you have enough conversations with enough people, then you can create, <laughs> then you can write your second book, right? <laughs> From a thousand to a million conversations with successful entrepreneurs, right? I'm already seeing the name, of, the title of that book, but even just... You know, because the best part of podcast conversations, as we all know, is learning from people. And 
you know, you start having these conversations and you see, start to see trends and you start to see, oh, like I've noticed that like, you know, how they found that most successful entrepreneurs had a morning habit. And then you've got, mm-hmm. you know, how Elrod's Miracle Morning, which became, you know, I think it was his research into finding out like what made these people successful. And so I think you're going to find the same thing if you have these conversations. I've been thinking about you with your business owner hat and saying, okay, is there a product here or is there something coaching or something that you could offer people? And I'm wondering if you've gone that far or you just right now focused on the interview itself. I have thought ahead a little bit about that. Like right now I'm focusing on just finding people for to interview for the podcast that will fit and whatnot. But then I think, like you said, like as you form, you know, relationships with these people or connections, then, you know, maybe you're, it could go beyond that, whether it's a collaboration or they hire you to do something like maybe they want you to take care of their podcast. Maybe they don't have a podcast. They're just guesting on shows, but they don't have a podcast. So that's kind of what I'm thinking in the back of my head. Yeah. And so, but what I have found, which I didn't even think of this, and it makes sense, I guess, when I've been contacting these people, whether or not they meet the criteria or not, a lot of them have responded saying, oh, I checked out your podcast. I really like it. So like my download and listener numbers have gone up a lot ever since I've been sending out these messages. So it's like, I'm trying to get these people on my show, but in the process, they're checking out the show. And, you know, so I'm like, oh, well, yeah. that was an unintended. Co- it's an interesting yeah. audience growth strategy for podcasters. <laughs> Start reaching out to people, ask them if they would like to, even if it's not a match, you just, if you send out like 20 <laughs> of those requests, you'll start to see like, you know, 20 of those might become actual regular listeners to your point. That's a really interesting like uh, growth hack there. I like that. Yeah. And I mean, it makes sense, but it's not something I had thought of or planned on. But now that I'm seeing that happen, I'm like, oh, wow, this is kind of like interesting, like you said, growth hack. Or, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so uh, <laughs> what's your current setup like in terms of how you record and, and do you envision doing any of that differently for like this new round? Probably going to do it the same way. I, I don't know if you, well, actually you can't see it here. I probably have it down too low, but it's an ATR 2100. And then it has like a little windscreen thing on it or pop filter, whatever. <laughs> and then I'm recording on, well, we're recording on Squadcast, but that's what I do as well. Though if I'm doing a solo yeah. episode, which I do sometimes, yeah, yeah. I'll record. Some, sometimes if it's going to be really short, I'll do it straight into Alitu. I don't know if you're familiar with that. Yeah. Oh but, yeah. I know Alitu. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I, I, I've had Colin on the show. He's a great guy. But if it's yeah, going to be Andre, long, cause yeah. they say really it's ideal for like five minutes or something, but if it's going to be a longer solo, then yeah. I do it directly into audacity. And then regardless of where okay. I record it, then I take the recording and I put it into Descript and which gives you a transcript. Yep. But the thing I mainly use it for is being able to edit the audio by editing the transcript so like the word i can automatically yeah, take out all the ums yeah. and uhs and stuff like that and so how has been your experience with that it's funny could because uh, i've had uh andrew the found andrew mason the founder of uh descript he's been on a couple of times as well on podcast junkies yeah his initial team like reached out to me the, mm. the, his pr team when they were launching so we chatted and i was like andrew mason i was like from groupon oh because he's the he's the former ceo of groupon yeah, and so they were like, yeah. And I was like, okay. <laughs> so like he came on the first time. I don't think Squadcast was, uh, had switched over yet. So then the second time was on Squadcast and I connected him with the Squadcast team. So they've chatted, but they're doing really interesting stuff with like the technology that allows you to record your voice and then insert the snippet. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you've used that feature yet, but you can record some sound bites and it'll, so essentially the whole, uh, for the listener who doesn't understand, if you forget to insert something you just need to like insert a little piece of audio typically you'd have to go back and record it with the script's mm-hmm. new feature overdub i think it's called you can type the word and it'll insert the word in your voice in the audio which is pretty wild <laughs> yeah i haven't tried it myself because i think you have to have one of the more expensive plans i think i have the the 15 a month oh plan. yeah okay you know because i'm yeah, frugal yeah, and yeah. everything <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> you can't go spending money on, on uh, yeah. tools. 
so because you're, you're i'm sure your audience <laughs> right. will call you out if you do <laughs> yeah and so as you think about like you know people using the, the tools and the relationships you're, you're building do you see like now that you're uh, you, do you automatically set up affiliates for all these companies and these tools that you used like from the get-go affiliate plans oh you mean like have i signed up as an affiliate for the different mm. yeah because it would seem like oh since i'm going to be talking about them i might as well go sign up and you know, whatever incremental revenue that comes because it just m- would make sense that if you're talking about them and, and driving traffic that people could probably have an interest in using some of them right yeah i definitely do that a lot of the things I recommend actually don't even have an affiliate program or the thing is free anyway. So like King Sumo, for example, but the ones that do have affiliate programs, I definitely sign up for those. And then like in the show notes, I'll have the link. And of course I do my little disclaimer, you know, the FTC thing. Yeah. 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 yeah actually explain that because I think uh, uh, there's always new listeners to the show. So I, I think explaining you know, oh, yeah. what you're talking about and why that's important. So if you do affiliate marketing, well, and I guess if someone doesn't know what that is, that's basically where you're referring a product or a service from another company. Ideally, that you use and recommend. I only refer stuff I use and recommend. And then if someone were to like click that link then and they buy then you would get a commission of it is basically how that works and so but the thing is you have to disclose it and it's kind of unclear if you're supposed to if you can just put that in your footer or if it needs to be so i have it in my footer i have it in my i have a page on my website called like 27 tools i use or something of all the stuff that I use and I say big and bold at the top, like these are affiliate links or some of them are. And then you just explain what that is that like, because it's an affiliate link that if they purchase through your link that I might earn some small commission, but it doesn't cost them anymore. It's just like supporting whether it's the podcast, the blog, whatever it is. I know people do it a lot with YouTube videos even like they review products. Oh yeah. 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 The unboxing. <laughs> Which is a clever kind of way of using affiliate marketing. So I'll have it in my show notes. But then even in the podcast episode itself, sometimes I'll say, well, I have a WordPress site, so I use pretty links. And that's basically like you can take yeah. any link, because most affiliate links are ugly. They're like all kinds of numbers and letters in them. Yeah. And so I'll take that and yeah. put it into the pretty link in like, so it'll be like my website.com slash product name, and then it'll go to the actual affiliate link. So, yeah, so I, yeah. and sometimes I'll recommend, or I'll, I'll be talking to someone, maybe they don't have like a product or service, but they have a book. So we'll talk about the book and then I'll put an Amazon affiliate link in my show notes to that book. And the nice thing about Amazon is that, so they pay out very little commission. It's like two to 5% or something, but yeah, it went down recently higher, after right? COVID, I think. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But so it, you're not, especially if you're just selling books, people are buying books, you're not, you're making pennies. But the thing that makes it worth it is that, So say someone clicks on my link to a book, they don't even buy the book, but then like 18 hours later, they come back and buy a flat screen TV. As long as they haven't cleared their cookies, uh, then I would get commission on the flat screen. Yeah. Like up to 24 hours, anything they buy. So it's happened happened twice so far, but not a flat screen TV, just like little tiny things. (laughs) Yeah. So it has the potential of adding up <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah definitely what's been the the feedback because i know a lot of the things that you talk about are when people find a, a show that's titled the frugalpreneur you know it's something you talk about on your site like are you looking for a way to build up your savings to pay down your debt you know and so the people who listen have that objective in mind and probably have like are an entrepreneur or thinking about becoming an entrepreneur and now that you're at 70 have you been able to hear stories from people that have listened that have taken action or like any of the the effects that people have had from like since the show's been live 
Uh, I mean, I've gotten positive feedback, though I don't I I don't think I've gotten anything directly yet about how they've implemented certain things and or tried certain things. And I haven't yeah. asked for that, but maybe I should. That would be Yeah. I think that would be a good idea. Sometimes if you especially the regular listeners, you know what's interesting is I found that regular listeners you know, people sometimes need to be asked to take action that they mm-hmm. they want to take. They just need to be reminded. So I've been making a concerted effort. I use a tool called Rate This Podcast. So I say at the beginning, now at the end of each episode, I'm like, if I have a review that came in recently, I'll read it out. And I'll say, hey, if you would like your review read, you know, read out, go to ratethispodcast.com forward slash podcast junkies and do that. And so along those lines, like, Asking the people, because there's probably people that have been listening to your show, <laughs> maybe I've even listened to all 70, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> like there's always those super fans that we kind of know because they're always active on, on social or they're always talking about it. Or, you know, whenever you find out like that someone's listening mm. to the show, you're just like, okay, how'd you find out about it? Like, where'd you find out about it? Like, I'm always curious about that stuff. So just asking them might be good and just building it in. I've been trying to get into the habit of having a script now of like, make sure I say this, make sure I say this, make sure I say this, like at the beginning and at the end of the episodes. So that could be like a constant reminder for folk. Yeah. And actually at the end of all my episodes, I do, I say to, if they could review it at rate this podcast.com forward slash frugalpreneur. So I use that same tool and I've been meaning to read the reviews on the show, kind of like what you're talking about, but yeah, I, yeah. I haven't yet, but that reminded me I need to do that. <laughs> and then, but then say, like you said, if you'd like to have your review read, then, cause that almost gives them like incentive, even more incentive to go and yeah. actually do it if they know that it's going to be read. Yeah. Yeah, so it's just like I mean, I always date myself with this reference, but when you called into the radio station and they played your song and you're and you get excited and you're like, oh, I heard my song, I heard my name. So like reading out the name of like, you know, the user ID or whoever it was that left you the review, you know, a regular listener is going to be the one leaving the review and then they're going to hear it and then they're going to be excited to say, oh, thank you, like for calling my name out. So I think it's like that loop that you got to create. So yeah, if you if you try it, I'd be interested to to hear. If it has a positive effect and people like sending you more reviews, <laughs> which is a good thing. Yeah. And then if they hear their name and their review on the show, they might be inclined to share that. Like, yeah. hey, I got a shout out on this show. And then, I yeah. mean, who knows? It, I suppose it has potential of going viral to some degree if if that person has a lot of family and friends they send stuff yeah. to. <laughs> so is the frugalpreneur like everything around about the brand? like your full-time gig right now? No, I, I mean, I still have a full-time job. Okay. So this is kind of, I mean, I guess you could call it a side hustle right now, but yeah. at a certain point, I think it'll be, because I, I actually have three books now, and the latest one I just released last month called Podcastpreneur. Okay. And I'm working on a, a course now about podcasting and okay. and stuff like that. So I'm trying to, I guess, expand my horizons within the podcast <laughs> podcasting yeah. arena. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I think maybe, maybe 2021 sometime, 2022, sure. maybe this will be my that, full-time put thing. That goal that, yeah. Put that goal. Up. Well, it seems like you have the pieces in place, especially that's a pretty strong brand. And I think if you're sort of strategic and how you're thinking about putting some of those, you know, it's the stuff that you talk about and, and the stuff that you've listened to, like, you know, Pat, I'm sure talks about it. I saw that you're doing a promo for Will It Fly as well. Oh, yeah. So every yeah. month, I actually use King Sumo, and okay. I give away a free book every month. And this oh, month, cool. yeah, it's Will It Fly. And there's going to be a month coming up with Super Fans, his other book. I've done like the Russell Brunson books. Mm. What's been the, the, the feedback or what's been the, the result that when you run those? It's been pretty good. I think... I mean, I because they're viral, right? If I remember King Sumo, like mm-hmm. it's like if you tweet this and if you like link this, and then you get more points, and then and there's like a leaderboard, and it'll show people like, and then you give it basically you give it away to the person who's like who's at the highest at a certain point in time. Yeah, you could do it that way, or you can click this okay. button that like automatically picks the person. Okay, okay. I found okay. So last month, my giveaway. I don't know if you're familiar with it called Pod Decks. They're like oh these, yeah, the cards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I got to talk to him. I think I reached out to him. I want to have him on the show. 
Yeah. So, yeah, I had him on the show recently. We did 20 questions. I asked him 20 of the cards. <laughs> but um, we worked something out to where he gave me a set of cards. And because mm -hmm. I had mentioned I was thinking about doing a giveaway. Yeah. So I did a giveaway last month for the full set. There's five different packs of cards. But I said, hey, can you, would you be interested in sending this out to your list saying, hey, there's a free, you know? Yeah. And so he did. And that's where I got like pretty much all the entries from. So, I mean, I think if you can now, okay. So will it, with Will It Fly by Pat Flynn, I'm not even going to bother trying. Like, hey, can you mail us? <laughs> yeah, no, that's not yeah. going to work. Yeah. But, so depending on what it is, I might start trying to collaborate with those people or have them send out the giveaway to their list. I mean, I could yeah. run, I could run ads, I guess, to the giveaway. I've thought about that. It's hard because if, yeah, because then it's sort of like eats into like you're spending money and, and if it's not generating a specific return. But I think what you did with the Poddex guy is an interesting case study because you could look of all the conversations you've had too, like who are people that have something that would make a good fit. And while it's nice to have a, like a book from Pat, which will get you the, the visibility, I think having a closer relationship, and I think you probably saw that with the Poddex guy, closer relationship to the person where you can sort of make this a win-win and say, Hey, you know, if, if we can work on this and you can send it to your list and almost have that be a prerequisite to say, I want to do this. But one of the things we need that we've shown has the most success is when you commit to sending at least one promo out to your list about what's happening. Mm -hmm. And so you, you could do that. Yeah. So it's all these little interesting little things that uh, I think that all these pieces that you're putting into place that, that I think are fascinating, leveraging the tools that you're learning about on the show and then learning, using them for yourself, which I think is cool. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So after that, I was like, I need to do more giveaways like you're talking about where I can, where it's, involving someone that isn't so huge that it you know like pat flynn where it's just not yeah. gonna get past the gate gatekeepers but you know if someone that i want to interview is smaller and has books or whatever yeah so i think i'm gonna try to start doing it that way versus just random giveaways that because i think when you leverage that person's audience yes because if they're already interested in that person and their stuff and that person sends out an email saying, hey, you can get my stuff for free if you, you know, I mean, yeah. It and what was the um, the way King Sumo works is you just have, how do you get an entry? You have to, you can sign up and put your details, but then you can also get more entries by doing certain actions. Yeah. So you get, and you, so whoever is creating the giveaway can actually set what kind of tasks, I guess, and, and how many points each goes each one gets, but yeah, so they get however many points you want to give them for signing up. So now you got their email address and then sharing on Facebook, Twitter, just all over social, even going and watching a YouTube video, going to a certain link, like there's very specific things you can ask them to do and assign whatever point value you want. So mm -hmm. like for me, sharing on Facebook or liking my Facebook page is only like one point. Our liking is like one point sharing, I think is maybe two. I don't know. Okay. But then like going to a link is like five, I, you know, just yeah, 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 yeah. you can, you can level it. And then depending on what they do, get some more entries and then you do mm -hmm. the rent and then the random selection to pick them. Yeah. I mean, you could just pick the person with the most entries, but what I've done is just hit, I forget what the button says, but you know, like, okay. It's like a random, random number generator or something to pick someone from the yeah the well it, it spits out someone's email address oh okay okay yeah okay. and i don't know if it's based on like so if someone has one entry and someone has 50 so when you mm -hmm. hit that button is that person actually oh maybe yeah likely? yeah yeah they probably do do some logic in there so they get more heavily weighted they yeah count the, count the entries yeah that's interesting yeah. yeah, that's cool. It seems like you could, if you think about it strategically now, reverse engineer it to say how, what's the best way to get the most visibility. And then, because that's more people that are learning about your brand as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And then there was one other thing I did recently. I've been able to grow my email list just in the past month by doing these just weird little things. What was the other thing I did? I found out about a some kind of stack podcast stack like oh, yeah, yeah yeah this new podcast thing it's like 
six thousand dollars worth of tools for like forty nine bucks or something like that. Well, that's the one going on right now, but there was another one re- like a month ago that was similar, and so I had found out about it before the the thing ended, and I contacted the person who was running it, and I said, and it was right after my podcast preneur book came out, and I said, I don't know if it's too late, but I was wondering if I could throw in an ebook of podcast preneur. And he said, oh, we could do it as like a last day, just bonus thing. And so he emailed his list. I don't know of how many people. And I got like at least 100 people or so, (laughs) you know, that went and got the book. So now I have their email address. But yeah, there's another one right now, I think, on through InfoStack. And so I contacted them because I wanted to do the same thing. But they said it was too late for theirs. But Mm. now I have a call set up for... I guess the owner or whatever for a future, if they do that same giveaway again okay. in the future. So, yeah. Yeah. I think uh, the entrepreneurial mind like starts working with all these different ideas. And I think you have the beauty of it is that you have your show. So you're, it's almost like you can test kind of like how Pat does it on his show. Like he's always testing out things. He calls himself the crush test dummy or something like that sometimes, <laughs> but you do something similar where you just like have these new tools and then lever- And then as you learn about them, you're like, well, I should be using this for my stuff. Mm-hmm. And I think when then, and then what would be helpful, I think is for you to talk about the experience you had for people like, okay, we just did the King Sumo thing. So maybe a post-mortem like episode where like you've got the thing with Pat and then do the results. So just kind of keep track of everything and just be like, okay, this is what we did. We, you know, I talked to Harry on the show about it, you know, like (laughs) just kind of like, it's kind of like that, this, this whole idea of like how the sausage is made. Like people sometimes want to know like the ins and outs. And sometimes when you hear these people talk about strategies, if, if they're just high level, you're just like, well, how did you do it? Like how I got to, you know, how I got to under a thousand to a million. And they say like these generic things like, oh, I meditated every day. And, and, you know, I wrote down my goals and just like, ah, yeah, like that's nice. But like, literally, like, I want to know, like, what did you do? Like, (laughs) like, what did you do for how long? And because there's people that are good implementers and if you give them the steps, you know, and they're like, okay, let's try it. And, and I think sometimes people that had the success can't point to one thing or, or certain thing they think. You know, or sometimes they got lucky or sometimes they had like an investor come in and help them or something like that. Well, you said no outside money, but I'm saying sometimes they it's hard for people to tell their own story, right? About having the success. They're just like, well, it just kind of happened and it just was hard work, you know, just hard work, <laughs> which is not a process people can repeat. So I think anytime you have an opportunity to, to show, even if it didn't succeed, like even if it mm-hmm. wasn't that good, I think because you're a trusted voice to your audience, sort of the, you know, the phrases like opening up the kimono and just be like, okay, this is what we did. The latest book launch, you know, the latest book promo or product promo that we did. And these are results. I have a feeling some of those episodes would probably be pretty popular for some, from some of your listeners that like the nitty gritty of like learning stuff, like what works, what doesn't. Yeah, that is an interesting idea. Maybe that's what I'll do next time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It, I noticed on your site, it says animal lover and world traveler as well. So I'm, I'm curious what, which animals and, and which places? <laughs> so, I mean, I love all animals, but my favorite, I have two favorites, koalas. Oh, koalas. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know why. I've just always, they're just so cute and cuddly. Yeah. And then pugs. I've had two pugs. Okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and have you been to see a koala yet? So I've seen one at a couple of zoos. Yeah. I'm in Dallas and okay. they had koalas there mm-hmm. for a little while. Okay. And then I went to the San Diego Zoo, which has a whole bunch of koalas, but I've never been able to hold a koala. And apparently you can only do that in Australia at the, like the koala sanctuaries. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I really want to go to Australia, not just for that, but I think that would be, I don't know. They just look so fluffy. <laughs> <laughs> I did get to see them. I did go to Australia. So that was, uh, oh. got Pretty close, but not obviously not to the extent that you can hold them. But it's mm. weird because they do just look like a, a fluffy toy. <laughs> and then what about the traveling? So I've been, I mean, all over the U.S., but yeah. then I've been to like London, Paris, okay. Rome, Toronto, various places in Mexico, like Cancun, Cozumel, yeah, yeah. Clyde, Del Carmen, various places in, in the well, like the Bahamas and the Caribbean, like yeah. Jamaica and, and different places on different cruises. 
I really want to go to Australia, as I said. Mm -hmm. I'd also like to go to Ireland and Scotland because they Mm -hmm. both have really pretty scenery. (laughs) Yeah. yeah. And then. It seems like something everyone's like forgot about how much they appreciate with COVID. Like now they're just like, oh man, like (laughs) like just anything because you can't really, no one can go anywhere now. So I think it's, it's on the top of minds of people a lot. Right. And I'd love to also go to Aruba because they have a flamingo beach and an iguana beach mm, okay. where, yeah, I guess I just like travel experiences that involve animals. <laughs> they do have the, um, I did see the flamingos in Orlando at the, uh, interestingly enough, at the alligator farm. So there's oh. like an alligator farm attraction. And then when you go there, it's big, obviously tons of alligators everywhere, but there's a section where there's flamingos. And I think it was the first time I've seen that many like live flamingos in one place because you're just used to seeing like either like the lawn or- ornament and <laughs> just like, yeah. and then when you look at them, like they would really like look like that and they mm-hmm. stick their head in the ground and all that sort of stuff. So it's fascinating. So I did get that opportunity. Yeah. I met a lady actually this past weekend who goes to Aruba once or twice a year, has like a condo there or something oh, really? like that, or has a timeshare, I guess. Okay. At the resort that owns the Flamingo and Iguana beaches. And anyway, so we got in a big, long conversation and she's telling me all the stuff to do and things. She's like, don't do an all-inclusive, you know, make sure you go into the city and eat their food. And, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I, I imagine there's a, when you talk to people about being frugalpreneur, then there's also the, the budget travel podcasts, right? Oh, <laughs> so. Yeah. I'm surprised you haven't crossed paths with those folks as well, because they're doing the same thing, like watching their budget for travel. Well, and I actually had an online travel agency for a while, one of my many (laughs) businesses. And I was actually, before COVID, I was already thinking about closing it because I was realizing that I liked podcasting and all things podcasting more and wanted to focus on that. But then when COVID hit and I had to cancel my bookings, and of course you don't get paid till they travel Mm. and just the whole thing. I was like, "Mm, yeah, no. And there was no end in sight. And there still kind of isn't as far as when travel will get back to normal. So it's like, so there might be a year or two where I don't don't really make much. So, but yeah, so I love traveling and it all comes together. I can see it now. (laughs) Yeah. And speaking of like budgeting though, we had a trip planned for Hawaii in April, but it got canceled because of COVID, but we were going to be able to go completely free because yeah so now i'm like i'm like a travel hacker too i had signed up for a few different southwest cards where like if you spend however much in a certain amount of time you get all these miles so we would just use them for all our bills and stuff and anyway so had over 100,000 miles and was able to get free flights and a crew and a, a companion pass so then like one person's flying free So then you're having, you're using half the miles. So then we had all these other miles that we like booked a rental car with and even the hotels and like two weeks in Australia, not Australia, two weeks in Hawaii, completely free other than the stuff we would do there, like eating and shopping. But then it got canceled. (laughs) That's interesting. Yeah. I mean, and then you, after this, you're going to have people hitting you up for travel advice. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) couple of questions as we wrap up. What's something you've changed your mind about recently? Well, I guess that would be an example of I've changed my mind recently about what I wanted to do. I Because I thought the travel business was going to be what I was going mm. to like do permanently as far as, you know, when the time comes to actually quit my day job and yeah, yeah, yeah. do my own business. So I guess I changed my mind about that. I, I'm now doing all things podcasting. <laughs> What's the most misunderstood thing about you? Well, I mean, a lot of people that I know aren't entrepreneurs and they don't get the whole entrepreneur thing. Yeah, that's true. Like, so I've been an entrepreneur for over a decade, had several different businesses and and whatnot, and they don't really get like why you would spend all this time and some money, but especially time working on things that you might not get any payback on for if ever, but you know, months, years. And yeah, I think from outside people, from non-entrepreneurs, I misunderstood in that way. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And yeah, that I remember leaving corporate and then trying to understand entrepreneur, like 
world and like it's i always call it like digital narnia like landing pages mm -hmm. sales pages funnels marketing funnels lead magnets like all the stuff like you have to sort of figure it out on your own and then once you figured it out like it's hard to explain to someone who's just used to like getting that paycheck and mm -hmm. just not, not having to worry about it right i can see that i can see that yeah because they're like well that's not stable like and what about your health insurance and all that kind of stuff? So, yeah, they they just don't get it, I guess. <laughs> Very cool. Well, Sarah, I'm glad uh, we had the chance to chat and learn a little bit more about what you're doing at the Frugalpreneur. I think it's great branding as well. You probably like, you know, just to be known for that brand, I think is pretty powerful. And it's interesting to see like how far you've come and then how you're implementing what you're learning on the podcast to learn how to be yourself a better entrepreneur. And I always love it when it feels like you're taking listeners along the journey. So like where you were with episode zero and episode one was very different than where you are now and where you're even what you're, you've talked about what you're planning for 2021. So it's exciting to see the success story because it, I think it, you know, I, I know that it motivates people and gets people excited. Mm -hmm. And I think the more people hear stories like yours that you've tried a different things that I think people think there's like one, try one thing. There's one business you can create that's surefire. That's, you know, no, not miss, um, but it's not that way. And we all know that. And I think the more stories like this of people that say, Hey, sometimes you do have to try like 10 different things <laughs> before you, you find the one thing. So I appreciate you sharing that story. Oh, well, thanks so much for having me. I appreciate it. So where's the best place to send folks to, to learn more about the show and, and what you're doing on the site as well? Yeah. So you can check out the show. The simplest way would just be to go to the com forward slash podcast. And that's Sarah with an H. And then St. John is S-T-J-O-H-N. And then all three of my books are actually available for free, the PDF version at the com forward slash free. Okay. And we'll make sure to have all those links in the show notes as well. Uh, okay. So you can just look in the show notes and it'll be there and they can click on those as well. Cool. I appreciate it. Thanks again to Sarah for coming on the show. Always appreciate it. Full show notes at podcastjunkies.com forward slash 245. Intro and outro music composed by Cedar and Soil, cedarsoil.com for his full list of music. Truly grateful to Focus Right for being a sponsor all year of the show. Don't forget to check out their awesome line of gear, specifically the Scarlet 2i2 Pro. Find out more at podcastjunkies.com forward slash focus right. Podcast promotion and marketing provided by Fullcast. Sign up for a free podcast brainstorm at fullcast.co forward slash chat 15. Tune in next year for my conversation with the first guest of the year, Haley Rowe, host of Health Coach Nation. And if you made it this far, you're no doubt looking for this week's retention hashtag. Let's go with Frugal Sarah, F R U G A L S A R A H, and tag us at podcast underscore junkies and Sarah at the Sarah St. John. That's T H E S A R A H S T J O H N. As I mentioned at the beginning of the show, I wish all of you and your families a healthy and happy new year. Thank you for being a supporter of the show. Big hugs. See you in 2021.